Uh, some breaking news right now. More details emerging about the FBI's Mar-a-Lago raid. Reports now saying that the FBI sees 20 boxes of items including photos, a handwritten note, and a grant of clemency for Roger Stone. That along with 11 sets of classified documents, Donald Trump. The former president blasting the seizure of the document, saying everything was declassified and all the FBI had to do was ask for the docs. Plus, another report that the FBI waited several days to execute the raid after the judge approved the search warrant. Some might say that's a long time. Some might say, well, maybe they were getting 30 plus uh, agents involved. And kind of amazing, they kept a secret for a change. Now, we have Newsmax team coverage of the story with Chief White House Correspondent James Rose in Washington, D.C. And Correspondent Mike Carter outside Trump Tower in New York City. First, let's start with our Chief White House Correspondent James Rosen at the White House. James, uh, what do you make of the details? I assume you've looked at some of the details associated with this warrant. Your thoughts here? Those are interesting details, if true, and there are others uh, that are also uh, apparently in play right now. Published reports suggested that, in fact, uh, after the National Archives retrieved 15 boxes of materials from Mar-a-Lago in January, sometime in the spring, uh, the federal government served a subpoena on former President Trump at Mar-a-Lago, reportedly, and it was the failure to comply with that subpoena that prompted Monday's enforcement action at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, we haven't heard former President Trump comment on that. He has disputed published reports suggesting that uh, the material seized included uh, documents relating to nuclear weapons that were classified at such a high level they exceeded the top secret classification level. Uh, one of the details you just mentioned, Bob, is very striking, which is, now we've already seen the number of boxes seized in this raid escalate in the published reporting just today, from 11 boxes now to 20 boxes. Uh, you mentioned just now that in the published reporting, among the boxes, among the uh, items seized from the FBI uh, was a grant of clemency to Roger Stone. Uh, that fact is likely to draw the attention of Mr. Trump's attorneys and indeed the wider public because the seizure of materials uh, that uh, go beyond, let's say, uh, classification items, uh, and that include individuals that, like Roger Stone, uh, could suggest to some eyes, if all of these published reports are true, uh, that the Justice Department and the FBI, under the guise of the classification case, were actually also engaged in some kind of fishing expedition, potentially, uh, for material relating to January 6. That is the suspicion that will be raised by the inclusion of the stone name uh, in the list of items allegedly seized during this raid, Bob. Yeah, let, let me ask you this, uh, James. Um, it seems like sending a subpoena to someone maybe they don't respond or not sufficiently and then you send in fbi agents to get um information that you would like in your case if it's the average person people understand that sometimes it's messy sometimes it's unclear but we are talking about the former president of the united states regardless of whether you voted for him or not this is a, a line that was crossed in doing that so is Merrick Garland and the Biden administration under more pressure right now because so much of the public has reacted negatively simply to that fact? So again, we have not heard former President Trump confirm that indeed he received a subpoena in the spring and that he failed to comply with it. We'll be paying attention to that right. element of the story. That would heighten the, the motivation for the Department of Justice to send FBI agents in, in essence, believing that they weren't going to get their hands on these documents because they had subpoenaed them and not received any compliance. There's another intervening event here shortly before the Mar-a-Lago raid, and that is the publication on Axios of photographs uh, through Maggie Haberman, the New York Times reporter, who's got a book coming out in which apparently she details some of this, where a toilet was pictured in the photographs and appeared to contain yeah. at its bottom ripped up pages with former President Trump's handwriting in them. So perhaps the Mar-a-Lago raid was also stimulated, not just by this subpoena that uh, allegedly was not complied with, but also by indications they were receiving in published reports that there might have been document destruction taking place. Well, you know, those pictures really were 
they, they set off a lot of thoughts and uh, it, it, like why would you have them why would somebody be taking the picture if you were destroying documents I mean there's so many things there James I won't you put you on the spot because you're an esteemed uh, reporter and I don't want you to speculate because I know you never do uh, we appreciate your report uh, from Washington DC today James Rosen our chief White House correspondent meanwhile new reports detailing what exactly the FBI did take in that Mar-a-Lago raid national correspondent Mike Carter is outside Trump Tower in New York with the latest uh, on what looks like, uh, Michael, you were saying it's been just like a regular day outside the tower. Yeah, it is a regular day, a regular August day. A lot of tourists around Midtown Manhattan, Bob. Uh, you really wouldn't know anything that was uh, out of the usual here if you weren't watching Newsmax right now. But thankfully, you are watching Newsmax, so let's inform you, shall we? Well, the FBI agents now uh, being revealed that by the Wall Street Journal that 11 sets of documents were classified documents were taken from Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home on Monday, some of those documents labeled as top secret, according to the Wall Street Journal. Take a look. Along with these 11 sets of classified documents, FBI agents took around 20 boxes of items, binders of photos, a handwritten note, and the executive grant of clemency for Mr. Trump's ally, Roger Stone. Also included in the list was information about the president of France, various classified TSE, SCI documents, an abbreviation that refers to top secret, sensitive, compartmented information. It also says the agents collected four sets of top secret documents, three sets of secret documents, and three sets of confidential documents. It's a whole bunch of confidential documents. The list didn't provide any more details about the substance of those documents. Well, Trump's lawyers argue the former president used his authority to declassify these materials before he left office. Trump spokesman Taylor Budowich telling the Wall Street Journal, quote, the Biden administration is in obvious damage control after their botched raid where they seized the president's picture books, a handwritten note, and declassified documents. Quote, this raid of President Trump's home was not just unprecedented, but unnecessary. Of course, uh, the Washington Post last night saying included in some of these documents may have been uh, nuclear weapons information. The Trump team, though, says they don't have the affidavit. They don't have any further information about what this whole case could be about. They don't know which witnesses, which leakers could be involved. There are no witnesses tied to this case right now. And any further information as far as what crimes may have been committed, Donald Trump's team simply doesn't know right now. And we're starting to get more information out of these warrants. Although, Bob, as we've been saying all day, uh, until this affidavit comes out, we're really going to not know the full details of what uh, is involved in this raid. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you, Michael Carter. Uh, to discuss more, we're joined by Republican Congressman from Florida and member of the House Oversight and Reform Committee, Brian Donalds, or Byron Donalds, I should say. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Uh, let me ask you, Congressman, um, we all know that uh, uh, you, you can have a give and take from the FBI or the Department of Justice and a target for an investigation. But somebody has to keep an eye on the, those that are keeping an eye on everybody else, right? So how do you think that should be unfolding right now? In other words, who should be watching the DOJ? Oh, quite simply, it should be members of Congress who are paying close attention to what's actually going on. Uh, we've been calling for hearings. Hearings should be happening immediately, especially since we're in D.C. voting on $730 billion of absolute hot garbage that the American people are going to have to pay for. So that being said, we should be doing this work right now. But Nancy Pelosi isn't going to call these hearings. As far as she's concerned, she wants to stay out of it. And so what's going to happen is we're going to have to go through the election process and see where, there, see where the American people stand. Uh, but without question, yeah. Congress is the last step in all of this. Yeah, and what's interesting to me uh, is the timing, because I wanted to ask you whether they feel the clock is ticking. Because um, after the, the next day or two, we expect Congress to go on recess, including the House, will be on recess until after Labor Day. And then everybody has an election, or almost everybody in, in Congress, uh, obviously a third of the Senate and, and the rest of, of the House. Uh, but there's speculation that you're going to have uh, Republicans do well in the fall. In other words, 
Next January, it's possible that they won't be able to investigate because they won't be the majority party in the House for things like this. And do you think that is propelling the DOJ and the Biden administration as they look at the clock, they look at the calendar to do this kind of thing now? I, I actually think so. I agree with your premise. Look, what we have is a situation where uh, you have elements in the Department of Justice, FBI, obviously the White House, this January 6th committee, which is a hot mess, and they've picked their target, they know what the target is, and they're trying to find anything while they have all the levers of power to try to entrap or criminalize Donald Trump. It's just that simple. And it's really atrocious, because if there was actionable evidence upon which you can lay a, 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 an indictment or lay the case for a potential conviction, you would bring that in the normal course of law. But what they're doing is using anything possible to try to find any document possible to try to convict Donald Trump. And I think it's completely outrageous. This is not the way our agencies are supposed to work. Um, it's really abhorrent to the United States and to our Constitution. Uh, Congressman, a lot of people feel there's a lack of transparency from the DOJ. That may change. But uh, a lot of people feel, even on both sides of the aisle, here's a CNN political commentator's response to uh, the raid at Mar-a-Lago and the claim that there were documents associated with nuclear weapons. Listen. Look, we understand the DOJ has um, information they need to withhold, but it's really hard to look at what happened yesterday as anything short of an overreach by the federal uh, authorities and potential political um, persecution. Anything short of finding the nuclear codes at Mar-a-Lago is going to hugely backfire on the Biden administration. Yeah, my first thought is, don't they change the code But when you have a new president? But uh, I'll, I'll ask you this in, in, instead. How do you think this affects the midterms? How will it likely affect your, your own uh, race in the fall? Well, first things first, I think that, you know, your comment's absolutely right. If they didn't change the nuclear codes, that's an indictment on the Department of Defense, not the president of the United <laughs> States or any president of the United States for that matter. But be that as it may, yes, you have voters in districts all across America who are looking at this news story and they're basically being like, what the hell is this? We need accountability in Washington. This is crazy. So I think what's actually going to happen, it's going to backfire on the Biden administration. It's going to backfire on congressional Democrats, both House and Senate, who have been pot committed to this strategy of criminalizing Donald Trump, regardless of the facts on the ground. All right, Congressman Donald, thank you so much, sir. Anytime. J.P. Morgan CEO is warning that an economic hurricane is coming. Are you preparing? If you don't do anything, your 401k could be a 201k, and that is not good. So call our trusted friends at Lear Capital. For 25 years, Lear has helped investors own gold to protect against market chaos. It's a good thing. They can help you, too. Get your information and up to $15,000 in bonus IRA gold. Just call this number, 800-880-4300. That's 800-880-4300. Thank <laughs> you.